Yes. All right. We're live now. Or going oh, live now. We're live now. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's Matt A.K. the Lumberjack Landlord here with his good buddy Dion. While we have everybody taking their time to join, you guys see the title. We're talking about evictions again today because I'm in the thick of it, just like I thought I'd be with the rental apocalypse. And it's all good. It is what it is. Um, so Dion, how's it going, my man? It's going really good. There's a couple of things um, when it comes to evictions that I I do very specifically to help avoid them. Yes. Um, I have a smaller portfolio, so I wasn't okay. able to be as decent a human being as you were. <laughs> right? You have the larger portfolio, so you were able to go. When the emergency rental assistance program came out, I looked at it and said, I only have 16 units. And, and the, the trajectory of this will be like in concrete. It will be like this. Somebody comes in who needs a place to stay. So you provide a place to stay. I could have yeah. provided a place. To, I could have been a great human being and done what you did. I'm not because I had a small portfolio because the person would live there for a, six months, a year, 14 months, however long the program lasted mm-hmm. for free. Yeah. They're not going to plan that mm-hmm. eventually this is going to end and I'm going to have to pay my rent mm-hmm. so that the end of the program happens and, and you're almost at a hundred percent issues with each person, whether they were evicted yeah. or not, you had an issue yeah. with each person that hit the I end. Did. Yep. Did. So, sure. Since you had at the time over 130 rental units, you took I think what was it 16 or, or yeah about about 10 right around 10 percent yeah and so 10 percent and you and you mm-hmm. said okay I'm gonna literally put this at risk yes to to not only have the eviction which has a financial impact mm-hmm. but the time yes. and emotional uh, impact of you have to now go to grown adults who probably have families and say here's how money works. <laughs> right, you've been getting this covered for free. It's no longer covered for free. Right. Uh, I skipped that. That's one of the yeah. things. I the other thing is I have conversations with tenants. Um, a, a lot of times tenants will say, hey, I'm, I've got this life issue going on and I need to pay my rent late. Is it mm-hmm. okay if I do? And one of the reasons why they sought out someone like you or me is that we self-manage. Right. We don't have a property manager in place that literally just goes, no, we, this is a business. It runs like this. Here's the late fees. Here's the hazard thing. So they think, you know, since we're, uh, you know, soft hearted humans, right? Because we're polite when we're talking to them. Sure. That we're the first one because they're not going to call AT&T no. Verizon and say, hey, I can't pay my cell phone bill this month. Can you guys no. just kind of carry it out? Maybe drag it out or the utilities or the car payment. <laughs> but rent, they assume maybe I can get this pushed off. So I always go, we have a lease. We have a contractual agreement that it is perfectly okay for you to pay your rent late. Yeah, there's going to be late fees. And as a favor, I'm going to file for eviction as soon as it's late, because it's going to help you. There are rental assistant programs out there that you might not qualify for until you've been served. So first is, yeah, you can pay it late. You're going to be paying late fees. It's what's in the contract. Second, I'm going to serve eviction because that helps you. And then third, I say, because most renters haven't looked at the the math of time. An average renter has about, on average, four weeks a month to save mm-hmm. and collect and get the rent together for the next month. If we allow a person to pay their rent a week late this month, their brain says, I have a whole extra week to get the money. <laughs> yeah. We need to yeah. take them to the next step and say, what does this do for next month? It reduces you the four weeks that you would have down to three weeks to come up with an entire month's rent. So sure. it's absolutely setting you up for failure. So, so here's the, the process for you. First, you're going to be paying late fees. So it's going to be more expensive. Second, I'm going to serve you with eviction papers because you are going to want those. And third, it's going to shorten the amount of time for the next month. So if <laughs> after hearing all of that, you would like to pay your rent late, that's the agreement we have. And I have yet in a decade to have one late or missing rent payment. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, <clears throat> so I think that Yeah, we have a lot of those same conversations. I think at the end of the day, people chose to be evicted. That's right, everybody. I said they chose to be evicted because that was the choice they made. So if you don't believe me that they made the choice, let me give you the facts. They were served seven weeks ago with a demand for rent notice to quit because they had not paid in five weeks. We did a video on this. I made a mistake. I said, let me help you out. You've always been a good tenant. I know that you'll catch up. Then they had a repair phone call. That repair call, we got over there. We fixed it. 
And my repairman said, um, so real quick, it's kind of like a shopping bomb went off in there. And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, I mean, new PS5, new 75 inch screen TV, both cars they had, both had new temp tags on them, 60 day temp tags. And I was like, hmm, they went shopping with my rent money. So anywho, your tenant got a chance to tell you how money works. (laughs) I got a chance to prove to him he was wrong. (laughs) So at the end of the day, they chose to buy all of those things. PS5, 75 inch flat panel TV and two Barca lounger chairs that looked pretty nice. And then two newer cars, all way newer than I drive. Newer than my wife's car or either of my trucks that I use for landlording. Go ahead, Dion. I just wanted to take a really quick second to say happy birthday to Beth Yes, Because she turned 29 again today. And congratulations on doing that. Not again. That's that's how it all works. Yeah, but it's not again. It's 29, period. Just 29, just Just 29, period. Yeah. I would know she was older. The only reason I know she's slightly older than 29 is because she's got older kids. (laughs) It's the only reason. Um, But yeah, like in this eviction thing, it's been downright hilarious because here was the response at the lockout. We've reached out to you a number of times to try to pay you. What's that look like? What is you trying to pay me look like? You have my Venmo. You have my PayPal. You have my address. You have a link in the portal. These are all viable options and you've paid through almost all those options in the past. So I don't know how hard you tried tried to pay me number one number two is he then says well don't we get a court date yeah that passed twice you had two chances at a court date you didn't get one because you wouldn't fill out the paperwork give me an ever-loving break then he's like he literally within two hours of getting the door locks changed sends me a text I can pay you all of the rent in full. Can we move back in? Uh, how many languages did you say no in? <laughs> Only three. <laughs> Only three. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Only three. No, no, and yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. That was it. No, you can't move back in, you dolt. I evicted you. You didn't pay. And now you want to pay because it's going to be inconvenient for you to move. You know what's going to be really inconvenient? When you actually look and see that I was letting you skate on $800 a month worth of rent. I told you that a rent raise was coming. It's unbelievable to me that somehow out of all of this, landlords are the assholes. I am really looking forward to the next article coming out on on Business Insider that you have yes. collaborated on. Um, yes. I think, so for anybody watching this, you might notice a trend going forward in the next couple of months. <laughs> um, for the last couple of years, there have been several, if you just Google Matt Hawkins Business Insider or Dion McNeely Business Insider, there's <laughs> somewhere between five and 10 articles that we've both kind of contributed to. Yes. And there are some people that go, wow, thanks for the inspiration. It's really cool that a ninth grade dropout and an ugly person could both achieve financial <laughs> freedom, right? So they're, they're like, you don't have to be super special to do this. There's a few of those. But then there's a lot of people who go, landlords suck. It's it's horrible. I saw it in a real estate group this morning where somebody was talking about depreciation. It's, it's a real estate um, agent group, right? So I'm in there to kind yeah. of figure out how agents think. Sure. And somebody says... My, you know, they they explained depreciation. My properties went up in value. I get to tell the, the government that they're older. So I get to write off the gains. Agents attacked them saying how to be a horrible person by using the tax code to your benefit, like, like mm-hmm. the way it's supposed to be. So the hate that comes out on landlords from these articles, um, for a bit, I would go in and, you know, not in the convincing business, but try to say, okay, sure, that's your opinion, but here's why I do it. Here's what I do. We're going to lean into we're going to support, dig the heels in and go, yeah, some landlords are jerks. And here's how we're going to be jerks, specifically <laughs> to you. Um, so those are going to be entertaining comment threads. Yeah. At the end of the day, if I'm going to be accused of it constantly, okay, you win. I give in. 
I'm going to start being a jerk to all the do nothingers on Facebook, to all the people that didn't get past the first two sentences that couldn't find a good friend to read it to them. At the end of the day, the numbers are what the numbers are and the life is what life is. You got to pay. There's no free lunches. I never got a free lunch. Other people don't get free lunches. You don't get one either. And at the end of the day, he chose two new cars newer than either of the cars that I have. He chose a new 75 inch TV. I don't have that. And he chose a PS five, which I also do not have. So oh, I hope he enjoys all of those amazing toys in the apartment that you will have extreme trouble finding with an eviction on his record because he earned every bit of it. And I, we work with tenants all the time, but if we've gotten to a point where I'm locking that door, I bent over backwards for you. I gave you chance after chance after chance, and I gave you too many chances and you didn't even deserve those. So I'm actually really excited because that lockout's done. He's going to come pick up his stuff. And, you know, and the best part is he was paying $12.95 and I kept on telling him, hey, listen, that's way below market. You need to be looking at what the market is. You need to be looking at these other units. Here's a couple of examples. I didn't want to extend his rent because I knew he couldn't afford it. I gave him as many cues and signals as I could to give him as much leeway time as I could. He still then decided just to not pay. And then he wants to pay it all just so he can stay. I really want to stay. I really don't want you to stay since I own it. I guess my decision stands. So at the end of the day, he's created an, an, he's created a scenario by which I, the landlord look like an asshole and I'm just not, if he doesn't like it too bad, pay your bills, dude, pay your bills. Your cell phone company won't let you go that long. Your car payment certainly won't let you go that long. Your car insurance won't let you go. Why is this not just another bill? It's just another bill. I'm not special. I'm just the one who ha- gives you the bill for where you live and sleep and make food. So yeah, at the end of the day, I get it. People want to think that landlords are trolls and horrible and awful. I, I Trust me, I, I, I don't listen to the people that are yelling from the parking lot. Don't care. You're not in the game. I don't, it doesn't bother me. But I think everybody should know that as I said in the rental apocalypse video series, it was three Uh, back about four or five months ago, this is exactly what I knew was coming. I saw the writing on the wall. I saw everything coming apart. I saw all these programs immediately shut down. And and a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? The reason that I can smile about locking somebody out is because I know that I did everything I could, even more than they were willing to, to keep them there. Did everything I could to keep them there. And they made the choice to choose something else other than paying for rent. So, and the reason why is a lot of people would say, well, why wouldn't you just take his money and let him move back in? No way. Cause he's done it once. He delayed it for seven weeks. I'm not going to pay for the posting fees. I'm not going to pay, take the time. I'm not going to take the hassle. I'm going to take the opportunity to say what people don't understand is that in business, which is what this is, He can look at it and he can say, he should have taken my $1,300 a month. Why? It's going to rent for $2,000 or $2,100 as soon as I clean it up and you're gone. You you put me in a position where my only option was a lot better than you. I mean, Dion, tell me where I'm wrong. No, let's say that he had been evicted from someone else's property and wanted to move into yours. So he has an eviction from right now. Does he qualify? No. Okay. So based on that, you would be setting yourself up for a discrimination case because somebody who isn't the same gender as him, somebody who isn't the same uh, photo negative color of him is going to be able to go. He went in with an eviction and you told me no because of my eviction. So I'm suing you. Right. Right. You have to have standardized criteria. If they don't qualify based on what they did with you, they wouldn't qualify if they did it with someone else. Right. It's it's no different because it was you. It's not like you could say, oh, you, you only went through an eviction with me. So that doesn't count. <laughs> so absolutely yeah. not. No. Well, and here's the crazy thing. So I'd talked to other landlords and I was like, have you ever let anybody? I was curious. They said, what are, you, what are your thoughts? I said, my answer is no. But I'm just curious. Do other landlords actually do that? Do other landlords set themselves up to re-evict somebody? And one of them had an absolutely brilliant strategy. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it in all honesty. I mean, I guess. 
but he has a brilliant strategy that actually says he will let you back in. If you pay all of the fees and the back rent, he will let you back in, but your rent is due on the first. And if it's not paid on the first of the following month, he gets an immediate rid of possession. You can make that and bake that into an agreement. I thought that was absolutely brilliant because it was like, at the end of the day, he's still giving them the chance to move back in. They just have to come up with that next month's rent too. Like, and not early, only on the first. There's a bit of a difference if you have something recorded with the courts, kind of like you you have a debt through your lease contract that kind of counts. You go to courts and get an assignment. Now you can do wage garnishment, sell it to collections, all that kind of stuff. And then Paul asked a really quick question here. Are yep. there deposit limits in your area? And in my area, it's it can't be more than your month's rent. Most Correct. areas have something similar yeah, to that or a percentage here. of that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Same here. Right. 